Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Des Reacts back with another video, man. Uh, right for this one, we got the real Captain Price, SAS legend John McAleese. Now, I play. I'm a Call of Duty enthusiast, man. I play that thing every single day. Um, one of my favorite series, video game series ever. But I didn't know it was based off a real person. You know, I knew that. You know, he's a real guy, obviously. But I didn't know it was like there's a real SAS guy that the character is made off of made after right so this one's gonna be pretty interesting um it looks like we got the iranian embassy siege which i never seen the real footage i only seen that little infographic thing so it's gonna be pretty sweet man and a lot of you guys want me to watch the real thing and you know we got a pretty good one here so smash that like button if you haven't hit that subscription button let me know in the comments on other videos you guys want me to react to without further ado let's get it Oh. Oh. That was a bomb. That was a bomb. We're going in. What is going on? Did they just like blow the wall, blow the window? Hold on. He barely got out of there in time. Damn. The explosion ripped through the building. A pall of smoke covering the front of it. The SAS had moved in. There's John. Wow. Look at that. They hear gunfire. At first, they're trying to hold out. They heard gunfire, dude, and they just... They sprinted in there. Look at that. They're just like, all right, we're going. This is it. He's After the second explosion, smoke a... obscured the front of the embassy again. And then there was gunfire. It seemed to come from all around the building. Dang. By this time, the police and the press nearby were told to take cover, and they scrambled between... So, for those of you guys that don't remember or don't know, which I know you guys all do on the YouTube, but I'm live streaming on my Twitch right now. So if you guys want to watch my live reactions, you guys just uh, follow me on Twitch. It's in, links in the description. Um, so the NBC siege and back in the eighties, um, some terrorists held, uh, you know, British citizens or London, England, whatever citizens hostage inside the uh, embassy uh, group of terrorists. And they, that's the first time the SAS ever came out of the shadows since, you know, since they were created since like the World War II. And they had to take out the terrorists. And it's like the tier one, top of the top uh, special forces groups in the world. Like the SAS created special forces. So like, so they went in and cleared them out. And behind cars and equipment. Shots oh. rang out all over the streets. <laughs> Meanwhile, people were still taking cover in the streets outside and no one was moving towards the building. The SAS were inside. Oh, look, it's on fire. He got his gas mask on, submachine gun. The first hostage to come out was he had an MP5. Sim Harris. He scrambled from the balcony into the adjacent building. He'd gone to the embassy last Wednesday to get a visa for Tehran with BBC producer Chris Kramer. Chris Kramer later came out sick. He'll be talking to us later in this bulletin. Oh, 
The embassy by then was surrounded by activity and a seeming confusion. The emergency services moved closer. I say it's legend. This is the guy Captain Price is made of. I think everybody knows me as Mac. Spent 23 years in British Army. Six and a half. <laughs> Even got the... That's what Captain Price wears in the video game. He got like that handlebar mustache, man. Look, that's him. That's pretty cool. Engineers and 16 and a half Special Air Service graduate. Most people would have heard of some of my exploits, namely the Iranian Embassy, uh, where I was sort of captured on film, as you might say, uh, going in through the front window without being asked. Um, I've served practically every country in the world while I was with the regiment. Uh, seen quite a few things, some good, some not so good. Uh, but at the end of the day, I like to think uh, I came away a better person, uh, having been involved in these things. Uh, I must say, uh, I did enjoy myself while I was in the regiment. Uh, made a lot of good friends and met a lot of strange and wonderful people. And basically had a real good time. So, hey, basically said in the SAS, I served in every single country in the world, basically, when he was in the regiment. And he's seen some good things. He's seen some very bad things. And we know what some of those very bad things that the SAS guys probably see. So that's interesting. But the number one point, man, is thinking as you door. can silently. When you get to the door, yeah, you've got the first guy who is actually looking at the door. Yeah, and what he's looking for is where the handle is and where the hinges are, yeah? Because the whole thing, if you can see the hinges on the door, yeah, yeah, the door will normally swing towards you. If you can't see the hinges, the door will normally swing inwards, yeah? That's but true. You've got an old adage, uh, in any building, doors always swing into the rooms, yeah? But the thing is, that one day, you might not check it, and you're trying to put the door inwards, and you find it comes outwards. This could happen. Yeah, you end up looking pretty stupid, and you also might end up dead, right? So it's checking the door, so these sort of things. That's a harsh reality, to, if you really think about it. Like, he just said, if, you know, look at the hinges. If you push inwards, right, like, and it's supposed to go out, and one, one day you're just not locked in, and you push instead of pulling, enemies might hear that door click and they might you know be able to prepare for the time you open it you might just get sprayed down right so that's that puts things into respect right there. that's that's crazy yeah you're also listening to see if anybody's inside yeah you could also be looking if it's dark even in daylight you get light coming through the bottom of the door so that in itself may help you to know if it's occupied yeah so that's basically the first guy's job mm. Now, this can be done, as I say, with a bit of firmness. You might get away with it just by speaking to them, or you may actually have to physically hold them in that room and say, right, stay there, stay in that corner, whatever, yeah? In some cases, if they're hyper that hyperactive, you may even have to handcuff them, yeah? Prevent them from running out of the building. Remember, the assault on the building, or the rescue mission, if you want to call it that way, is still ongoing. You can't afford to have a hostage, or perhaps it could even be a sleeper, from the body side, run about that building, yeah, getting in everybody's way and perhaps getting shot. Yeah, remember, one of these hostages might be, let's say, high up the old social ladder, and that's the person that you're going to rescue. Yep, that's your main priority. What would happen if he or she comes running into the room because you haven't controlled them and they get shot in the corridor after being rescued? It would look very good. Yeah, your CV would be uh, straight out the window. Yep. Mmm. I've raised those same dead bodies. Um, when you see dead bodies, this sort of thing, does it worry you? Do you get upset about it? Do you get nightmares? The answer again is no. Um, it's something you become accustomed to. It may sound a bit, well, let's say savage. Yeah, but you do become accustomed to seeing dead bodies, <clears throat> especially. Yeah, I mean, that's like anything you do, right? Like, you know, keep for instance, exercising right you might go for a mile jog the first time you worked out in two years you'll be dying right but if you run that mile every single day for 30 days right 
the mile is going to get easier and easier because your body's getting conditioned to it. Kind of like when they see dead bodies over and over, they take lives over and over. Like they just get conditioned in their brains. Like the brain compartmentalizes it, like saying, okay, this is work. This is job, right? Business. Like it detaches their emotion from it. So that's pretty, pretty interesting. In the job that I used to do. Um, the thing about it, you learn not to become um, too personalized with the individuals. They are, let's say, an enemy. Yeah? You may know a lot of personal details about them, uh, but these are soon forgotten. Yeah? It's just an enemy. Because yeah? at the end of the day, no matter what sort of job you're doing within the anti-terrorist, uh, let's say, scenarios, they are a bad guy. You're a good guy. Yeah? They're trying to kill you or kill hostages and you are in there to stop them. And if you've got to kill them to stop them... His son following his son. He joined the S... Wait. What did I say? John's son also followed his S-Foot as well joined the SAS. Wow. He was killed by an IED while serving in Afghanistan. Oh, no, man. R.I.P. R.I.P. So he's Scottish. Just two years later, his father, essays legend John McLeese, died of a heart attack. He's dead? Dang, man. <sighs> R.I.P. Captain Price. Whoa, look at those. Look at those pictures, man. That's pretty sweet, though. That's pretty sweet. That's crazy. <laughs> Dang. 
yeah oh man that was pretty that was a pretty cool video i didn't you know learned a lot about captain price and wasn't it for him we want to have such a memorable video game character if you guys enjoyed this video please smash that like button hit the subscribe button if you haven't already let me know in the comments your thoughts and feelings on this and other things you guys want me to react to um go ahead and dm me on my instagram or twitter of a video reaction suggestion and you know i might be reacting to it catch you guys on the next video peace